So today we are talking about, of course, prospering our soul. And again, our soul is our mindset. Our soul is our way of thinking. It's what we believe. Okay. It's also, um, it's the knowledge that we have. It's how we see things, how we see our circumstances, how we see our life, how we see the people that come into our life or the people that are in our life or anything that information that comes to us. It's how we see it, how we perceive it, how we process it. Um, cause no two people are exactly the same and it's going to be based on what you believe. It's going to be based on what you feel. So, um, part of our soul is based on how we feel our emotions. Okay. And then also what we will do. So part of our soul is what, what we choose to do, what I will do, what, you know, I can, I can say I want certain things, but what I will do is kind of determined more so by how my soul is and my soul will indicate what I am, what I will do. So that's why it's so important for us to prosper in our soul um, so that we can get our, our way of thinking to line up with God's wisdom, to get our way of thinking, to be able to, um, our believing our emotions to line up with what God's word says so that we can see the word of God manifest in our lives. And that's what's very important. You want to see the promises of God. You want to have answered prayer. You want it to be that, um, that God, you know, God is with you, uh, in your business endeavors that you, uh, are learning how to release your faith, to allow the grace of God to help manifest, uh, his supernatural increase, his healing power, even in your body, uh, that God, you, you release your faith to receive, um, the peace that you need in your mind or even just a, the healing that you need even in your mind. And so that matters what our soul is. You know, when we're in church, we wonder sometimes why, how, how I can sit in church and love the Lord and love the word of God, but yet I'm not letting the word of God renew my mind. Okay, that's where we need to, we got to get to a place that I am submitting myself to his word, that I am yielding myself to his word. I'm allowing his word to change my way of thinking. I'm allowing his word to change how I, my emotions respond to things. I'm allowing his word to change how I make my choices. Okay, what I say even. All right, and so that's very important. So we're going to talk today about unbelief. So unbelief is an enemy to truth. Unbelief is an enemy to your dreams. Unbelief is an enemy to the life that God has for you. And unbelief is an enemy to what um, God has promised you in his word. Turn with me uh, to Mark chapter 13. So in this passage, we talk, we see here that Jesus went back to his hometown. Now, when we see that he started off in ministry, it, it shows that he cast out devils. He healed many people. Um, he brought uh, provision for people. Um, and then so what it says here. Um, is it 13? Let me see. Okay. So it is 13 and 53 through 58. And it's, it's so dark in this room, but the light makes it better on camera. Um, so I'm gonna try to read this. So it, what it's talking about in verses 53 through 58, it talks about how uh, Jesus went back to his hometown and then what he went there for, of course, because that's what he came to do was to share, uh, share the life of God, you know, share that you can have reconciliation with God, share how the kingdom of God is come. And then what's in the kingdom, wholeness, peace, life, joy, reconciliation with God. So he wanted to share that with them, that they can have salvation. And so even when he was doing that, of course, the people had a problem with uh, Jesus because a lot of times, you know how that is that, you know, sometimes when you're starting a business or you have an idea, you're trying to tell the people that are closest to you. And a lot of times they kind of look at you like, mm -hmm. you know, they're not as, um, as supportive as you would like them to be because they, they know you in a sense. They think they know you, um, but they don't know all of you apparently because they didn't know all of Jesus either. You know, they didn't understand that he is the Messiah, that he is the Lord. And so it says that they were offended by him in verse seven it says 57. It says they were offended by him. You know, we know your sisters. We know your brothers. We know your parents. We know you. Aren't you the same one? You know, they were just offended by him. They looked at his outer appearance. They looked at his upbringing. They looked at um, his where how he grew up. Like they just felt so familiar with him. And you got to be careful of that. You know, that you all, that you don't become so familiar with the people that um, that God would bring into your life or that God has already placed into your life, um, that those are the same people that he wants to use to be a blessing to you. But, you know, you kind of look at him like, hmm, you know, who, who are you to tell me anything? You know, I, I know you, or we've been through the same thing. We had the same walk, but then maybe we, we change course at some point or, you know, separate our ways. But then when they come back or just trying to minister to you or just give you some words of wisdom or instruction, you know, we have a tendency to say, well, you know, just too familiar. 
And so that's what happened with it when it came to these people, uh, when he went to heal them, that he, uh, he was not able to. It said that in verse 58, it said that he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. He could not heal these people because he, he went there to heal them. He went there to, uh, to cast out any unclean spirit that was trying to torment them. He went there to give them healing in their mind, lift off the weights, the depression, uh, to get rid of the anxiety. He went there to give them wisdom and impart some uh, words of wisdom and to help prosper them in some way. He went there to help them. He went there to heal them of any sickness. I mean, any sickness that they could have, no matter how long it, they've had it. He went there to help them, but they were so offended by his appearance because they were so familiar with who he was or his family, or they thought they knew him, okay, that they just would not receive. It says that they, he could not do many mighty works. He couldn't do what he wanted to do. He couldn't move the way he wanted to move. I mean, he was there present to heal. He was there present to deliver, but they could not receive because they heard the word that was taught you know, saw the miracles, maybe a couple, a few people might have got uh, healed. Like, yeah, I see that. But, you know, they had unbelief. So unbelief is an enemy. Unbelief is an enemy to your deliverance. Unbelief is an enemy to your receiving uh, healing in your body and any organ that's not working properly. I know I hear a lot of cases about kidneys, um, depression, anxiety. The unbelief is a hindrance to you receiving uh, God's word. See, God says, I sent my word to heal you and to deliver you from all your destruction. So Psalms 107 verse 20. So he says, I've sent my word. Jesus Christ is the word of God made flesh. And so unbelief is an enemy also to you receiving your answer prayer. You've been praying, you've been asking, and then maybe sometimes you might have gotten to the point where you're complaining like, oh Lord, this is uh, what is going on here. But what God is saying is that we cannot have unbelief uh, in our hearts. So, so let's look at now um, in James chapter one. Now he talks about, we're not going to talk about that part where, you know, count it all joy when you enter into different kinds of uh, tests and trials, because we're not really focused on that part. So what we want to talk about, though, is what he's saying is that if you are in a test or a trial, if you are faced with something where you are wanting, you have needs, you have desires, um, things need to be worked out in your life. He says that, okay, you have to be patient, of course. You have to also have faith. And so he's saying that when you are in situations, ask for wisdom. Ask for God's wisdom. See, because the world has a way of doing things, wisdom. The world has a way of instructing or thinking that what's best or uh, what's what should be done. But God has the way of doing things. And so we want to, he says, ask for wisdom. So you ask for wisdom in your for your situation. No more complaining. No more um, feeling sorry for yourself. I'm not saying you don't feel. But what I am saying is that, you know, you got to get to a place that you raise your faith and say, okay, wait a minute. If, if I know that God is, is a miracle worker, I know that God is able to open doors. I know that God is able uh, to, to give me the answer that I need. Then I need to ask him for his wisdom, you know, and his wisdom will open my eyes to see the answer. His wisdom will open my eyes to see the solution. His wisdom will give me the understanding that I need to act. Okay, to take that next step that I need to make. Even if it looks like I don't know what to do, his wisdom will give me that next step. Okay, so what he's saying here is if you ask for wisdom, though, you're going to have to ask for it in faith. He's telling them, don't ask for it. Uh, he says, but verse 6 in James chapter 1, verse 6, he says, but let him that um, ask, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven uh, with the wind tossed tossed and tossed for let not that man thinks he shall receive anything of the Lord. So when we ask the Lord for something and we're asking in faith and he's saying that we're asking, but then we're, we start wavering, nothing wavering. In other words, you're, when you're asking God for wisdom, when you're asking God for healing, when you're reading the scripture that he says that by Jesus stripes, you were healed, that he supplies all your need according to his riches and glory, that he surrounds you with favor, that he will bring down your enemy. They will come at you, but they will stumble and fall, that he will raise you up above your enemy. You see, you to get into the word of God and you have this like you're seeing some of the promises of God you're seeing how good it is you're reading the stories and how God moved in their life and what you want is for that to manifest in your life and so what the Lord is saying here is like yes that can be so but he's saying here ask in faith nothing wavering he says if you're wavering you're always tossed to and fro you're letting what you see what you hear what you feel what's going on around you you're always letting that distract you from what his word is saying you're letting that distract you what the, the 
the physical, the natural things that's going on distract you from what God's truth is saying. Sure, it's, it's not that the physical is not happening, but what we're saying is we need the supernatural to come into our natural. We need the miracle power of God to come into this situation. You want the miracle, miracle power of God to give you that answer you need. And he's saying you can have it. He's saying it's more than available for you. But he's saying you got to ask in faith. You can't be wavering and tossed to and fro. And as soon as you get with your girlfriend or somebody, you start, you know, you want to tell them the problem. And you know they're not going to really give you. I mean, if you got a good girlfriend who knows how, who has faith in God, I mean, they're going to encourage you and help you stop all that. And then they're going to help you direct you back to the word. But then most people don't really have that sense of like, um, to, I mean, they want to they, they, they wanna support you as best they can, but when it comes to faith partners, you need some faith partners around you, some people who know how to believe God and have the word of God who will direct you back, and your flesh is not going to like it. Your emotions in that moment is not going to like it. You're going to feel like they're not listening, nobody cares. You're going to feel that in that moment, but it's for your good. God is maturing you. He's growing you. He's helping you to know who he is as the Lord, your God. He's helping you to know how to stand on his word that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, God is raising you up. He's training you. Okay. You're, you have the milk of his word, but now you got to really learn how to in, uh, digest it. You know, you got to learn how to live by it. And so he says that when you ask, you got to ask in faith, nothing wavering. You can't just be tossed to and fro. And then there are times when thoughts come to your mind, certain feelings come to your mind, then that's when you just get back into the word of God. Okay. I need to stop that thinking, stop that feeling, or just pray. I just need to pray and read or whatever the case is. But he's saying that when you are wavering, he says, you can't receive anything from the Lord. So maybe this is why, you know, you've been praying about a situation. You've been praying about your marriage. You've been praying over your children, praying about your health. You don't have to wait, wait, you know, praying about your health, praying about your finances, whatever it is, praying about helping your business. Okay. What he's saying is that he's, you know, maybe we've been, we've been wavering, you know, just tossed kind of like, oh, maybe I should do this business instead. Maybe I should go find this job. Maybe I should divorce this spouse or whatever the case is. I mean, we come up with, we start wavering, you know, we know what the promises of God say, but then we start wavering. And he says that, uh, let not that man think that they shall receive anything of the Lord. And for a verse eight says a double minded, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. So we have to be stable in it when it comes to the things of God. He wants us to be to that place that we are uh, fixed and uh, fixed on his word. Fixed. Our heart is made up. You know, our mind is made up and our heart is fixed on the word of God. And that's what God wants us to have. Now, I'm not going to go turn to this real quick, but uh, Matthew chapter 17 talks about how the man um, who had the, um, the man who had the lunatic son, well, different translations call it different things, but anyway, but he had an unclean spirit. It, it, it uh, manifested itself. And so that's what you have to understand too. Any sickness or any kind of mind things, a lot of times that can be an unclean spirits, okay, that are trying to manifest itself as sickness or as some kind of disease. And so anyway, but it looks like, uh, what, seizures, okay? And so what he said here, and so the disciples tried to heal the son, and so they, um, it said he, they could not. And so they saw Jesus coming, and so they, came, they went running the crowd and the father, and everybody went running to Jesus um, for him to heal. And then the father said, look, you know, I brought him to your disciples and they couldn't heal him. And so, um, and then this is Matthew chapter 17. Just read the whole chapter and so you could get the whole story. Okay. And then it says here that, um, and then Jesus, of course, he, he, he kind of rebukes them for their unbelief because they had unbelief. But I believe also a lot of times people didn't realize that they were, he was also referring to the disciples. Okay. They, he, he rebuked them for unbelief. A lot of times he rebuked them for having fear. Why are you so fearful? You know, like, what are we doing here? And so he's saying, um, but then they, they ask, okay, so he heals the son and then they ask for themselves, the disciples, because you should want to know this. <laughs> Why am I not getting answered prayer? Why am I not seeing windows of heavens open and pouring me out a blessing? I'm a tither. I'm a giver. Why is it not giving unto my bosom? Good measure, pressed down, chain together, running over. What am I missing? You know, Lord, give me your wisdom. Give me understanding. And so they ask, they ask Jesus. He has no problems with you asking. So he, they ask Jesus, you know, why could we not do it? You know, what happened? Because I know we believe, we know that you 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 imparted us uh, the anointing to cast out devils and to heal all manner of sickness and disease. We've done it. You know, we've seen it happen. So why couldn't we do this in this case? And so you have to read, you can read Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They each have the same story, but it says certain things that are really good, I feel. And so, but it says here in verse 20, he says, you know, I said, why could we not cast them out? And then in verse 20, Jesus says, because of your unbelief. 
See, unbelief is a is a robber. <laughs> unbelief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's I know that's St. John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But unbelief is the same way. Unbelief just does not want us to really believe what God's word is saying. And so what what do they have? And then he talks about that you can have faith as a grain of the size of a mustard seed, and you can say unto this mountain, be thou uh remove hence to yonder place, you know, go over there, and it shall re uh it shall do what you say. And then he says here, I love this part. Then he says, and nothing, okay, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing. Okay, so nothing. Nothing. Even if it looks like you have nothing to start with, even if it looks like your situation is so far gone, I know how that feels. Okay, but the thing is, like he's saying that nothing is impossible unto you. And then he says in verse 21, now here's the key that I want to kind of focus on. He says here, how be it, this kind goes out uh, not out, but by prayer and fast. In other words, what he's saying, however, this type of unbelief, this kind of unbelief, a lot of times people look at that as unclean spirit. This unclean spirit goes out by fast, by fasting and prayer. This is the only way that, that kind of unclean spirit. But okay, now I'm not saying, of course, there's um, certain health benefits, physical benefits that, that occur when we fast, but that's not what this is saying because obviously the, in, in the name of Jesus, I mean, there's no other name that um, that is greater. Okay. So there's, there's nothing that can cause nothing that can make God's word work better, you know, or make his name more powerful. It is what it is. I mean, he is who he is. And so the thing is, but they, he, he's talking to them about their unbelief. He's talking to them. You have faith. Yes, but you also have unbelief. And so I believe, okay, and this was a revelation for me because I believe that their unbelief was kind of stirred up. And this happens to all of us. And see, this is nothing to be ashamed of. This is nothing to feel like you're less than or like you have this weak kind of faith. No, the devil is a liar. Okay, this is for us as a body of Christ. We need to, we're just growing and learning, increasing in our knowledge of God, increasing in understanding, uh, gaining greater understanding how to operate and to walk by faith and not by sight because we are commanded to live by faith. We are commanded to live by the word of God. And so we're learning how to do this. Okay, so this is not, a, shouldn't be anything that makes anyone feel bad. But I believe one thing that happened when it came to them uh, having unbelief, I believe they had faith, obviously, but I also believe what caused the unbelief was what they saw. Okay, if you read the other ones, I don't know if it says it in this one, but if it says that the boy, what the father was explaining what happens to him, and then it was happening, that the, the because uh, it happened when Jesus came, you know, it happened when he was laying hands on him. It, what happened was, the the whatever that unclean spirit was or whatever ailment he was dealing with whatever seizure it was so bad that it was like throwing him in the water throwing him in the fire it was just you know he had all these convulsions and then he would just fall down as if he were dead okay and that happened when jesus you know would pray for him as well that happened but that did not move obviously jesus it can move us <laughs> for real. It can move us. You know, you, you're believing God for something. You're believing God for a situation or a circumstance. And then it looks like, you know, all hell don't broke loose. Like what in the world? You know, it, it moves us, you know, it makes us uh, become wavering. Like, okay, what's going on here with unbelief to start stirring up because we're basing now on what we see what we hear and what we feel. Okay. And so Jesus didn't do that. And so he's saying here, but you know what, when you're dealing with something that in the natural, that in it, everyone has their different level. Okay. Don't try to judge anyone else's, um, what they with oh that should be no big deal okay well it is for them okay so let everybody have their own place you know let them let everybody grow in their own at their own stage you know where they are so he's saying here that when you're dealing with something that is affecting what you see here and feel when you're dealing with something and you find yourself just really focused on the natural you know you have your prayer petition up before the Lord he's saying here fast and pray. He's telling you that will go out. That unbelief, that, that that struggle you're dealing with, that that doubt you're dealing with, that unbelief you're dealing with, that will go out when you begin to fast and pray. Because why? When you're fasting and you're praying, your spirit man, okay, because you're made spirit, soul, and body, your spirit is saved. Your soul needs to prosper. Your body just obeys, you know, if you whatever you tell it. Okay, so the thing is, Okay, so what happens is when we're fasting and we're praying, our spirit, the Holy Spirit within us, if you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, okay, if you're saved, that the Holy Spirit within you will begin to help remind you, put you in remembrance of God's word. The Holy Spirit will begin to light your path. The word is a lamp to your feet and a light into your path, but the Holy Spirit will reveal truth to you, okay? He'll remind you of what's real. 
I mean, real in the spirit realm. He'll remind you of what you can have, the supernatural ability of God. He'll remind you even of who you are. And then it'll just cause like a righteous indignation within you. Like, wait a minute, devil, you a liar. I don't tolerate this. Doesn't matter how bad it looks. And then you just begin to praise and thank God for who he is. Okay, you begin to thank God for the deliverance. You begin to thank God for the breakthrough. You begin to thank God for the doors being open. You thank God for the healing. You thank God for the peace and for the strength. You begin your whole, your whole, your soul, your mind, your way of thinking, your way of seeing, your your situation begins to change. Your soul is prospering because why? You're fasting and you're praying. You're shutting down this flesh. You're you're base rebuking your flesh. Like mm -mm, enough is enough. I've been I've, we've been walking this thing out in natural too long. I need some spiritual help here. I need some supernatural help here. And so when we need the supernatural help and we having struggles in our flesh. Then what we have to do is just begin to fast and pray. And that's what he says for us to fast and pray. And so unbelief is an enemy to your prayers. Okay, so I, I know this has helped in a sense that like, okay, let me start. Okay, let me fast and pray. And then, and then let me just help you out too. Okay, so now some people have different levels of fasting again. I am, I, uh, you know, don't call, don't try to do like a 40-day fast or something like 21 day Because, you know, just being cliche with the, what everyone else is doing or some of the things that have been taught. Which is nothing wrong with that if, you, if the Lord leads you to do that. But I'm telling you, if you haven't fasted, I mean, to say you're going to do a 40-day, I don't know. So I would just recommend that you just say, Lord, I'm going to set myself to seek your face. I'm going to set myself, maybe I'll do breakfast. Maybe I'll skip dinner when I get home from work where I can pay more attention. You know, instead of watching TV or getting on my phone, maybe you'll say, well, you know what? When I get home from work, I'm just going to fast. You know, I'm going to just spend time in the Word. I'm going to listen to some uh, some teachings. You know, I'm going to uh, read. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to, you know, just let God minister to me. Or maybe you say, well, when I wake up, I, I'm going to I'm gonna skip. I'm not going to do the breakfast or I, I'm going to go through the day, even my work day, I'm just going to have a spirit of prayer and then I'm going to get home. Whatever it is, the goal is just to fast and pray. And you'll find that as you start, you know, it just becomes better. It becomes easier to do so and to keep on fasting and praying. But God just wants to encourage you. And I know this is a little bit longer than I thought, but God just wants to encourage you um, that he wants you to understand that he is he's ready to do mighty miracles in your life. He's ready. Uh, he's already released his word into your life. If you are a person that you've been crying out to God, you've been asking the Lord for help. You need his uh, you've been asking the Lord to move in a situation. Uh, he's saying yes. He's saying yes. And then you, if you find yourself just constantly having those ups and downs emotionally, ups and downs in your thoughts, looking at things, you know, with, you know, a uh, half empty viewpoint, you know, it's like if you're looking at things uh, in a negative way, just looking at, well, I'm just saying it like what is what it is, you know, no, you got to say what God says it is. <laughs> That's what makes the difference. You know, we know what it is, but we need something different.